earning and a 20 or 30 US dollar depending on the seller multimeter. The question is, is this any good? And yes, to get started, I bought one of these because I am working on a book for absolute beginners. So I know this is not a high-end product like what you can get from other companies, but it is something which every beginner can afford. He can even afford two of them. And now we are going to look what I got at what it can do. And yes, this is what you find in the box. At least if you buy it from HE store, you see they packed it up like so. And then basically I could pick it up at a little pickup shop down the road. And yes, to me, this looks a whole lot like they just put a sticker on the original supplier's package. And no, I am sorry, I have done them injustice. Because actually, this seems to be the package from Aneng. And yes, we get this Velcro bag. Then here we get some Hungarian text translated by HE Store. Here we have the AN8009 and we have a bunch of accessories. Let's start out by unboxing the accessories one by one. Oh, and here we have a little English user manual. First things first, obviously we have these classic probes, which I personally find interesting because they are the short tip ones. I personally prefer the long tip version, but well, to each his own. And the cables, of course, are a bit flimsy, but that is as it may be. The next piece of kit is this guy here. That's a thermosond. Just in case anyone particularly needs them, I don't, but this is a thermosond for measuring temperatures. And then finally, we get this grab bag of probe toys. We get these usual, these screw tips here. Then we get this, which is an adapter where you can screw things in. And finally, we get these more pointy tips. And what is interesting is that actually you can put together your own probe using these, you see this pin here. You put this pin in the back here, you screw it in. Then you screw this in here on the other side and ta-da, there's your more classic probe if you need it. And yes, this is the classic multimeter, the actual unit inside. I really would have wanted a sock or something like that, but I have an old sock which I will use to pack it up in the future in the carry. And ta-da! Here she is. That's the actual multimeter. And it's kind of very light, so it feels a bit strange. It has here in the back this foot, which we can open, that feels quite flimsy. But well, here it stands. And of course, if I turn something, it's a bit flimsy, but what do you want for 35 US? The button actually feels kind of good. And uh, yes, here below it, we have the battery door, which we of course have to open if we want to install batteries. And that's what we're gonna do next. And yes, now we want to exchange the battery. So here we have a screw, which we have to open. Feels kind of flimsy. And here we have the battery door. And this is something which I like a lot. If you look at this very carefully, you see that this is one of these press-in inlets. So opening and closing this 50 or 100 times is not going to damage the body of the multimeter. Maybe eventually this construction, which you incidentally can take apart to remove the rather flimsy stand, will get damaged. 
But the actual battery door and the main case of the unit, the receiver of the unit, will not be damaged. And this is something which I find quite a good idea, especially for amateurs and beginners who just often forget to switch off the multimeter. And now that we've got the battery inside, we can power the guy on, like so. And here we have the display. And what's interesting is it has a backlight, but to turn the backlight on, you need to push the range key for a bit of a longer time. And if you push it for a short while, as you see here, you can cycle through the various modes. So you can select which of the measuring modes you want. And yes, getting back into auto range apparently requires a power on, power off, and the unit does forget to keep the backlight on. And what is also interesting is that you've got for most of these things multiple modes. Like you see here, for example, on this thing here, we've got the volt mode, then we've got Hertz and we've also got AC. And to toggle between these modes, you push this button here, as you see. And then you have to play around with it a little bit until you get the right mode. I mean, obviously this can be a bit annoying if you don't use, if you use it a lot. But again, this is a 30 buck multimeter. And in many ways, I think one should be happy that one got so many modes. And while I am not a metrology guy by any means, I did build myself this Tamhana rig here, which is one of these AliExpress voltage reference PCBs inside of a box to accelerate thermal stability and aging. And I'm now gonna go and power this guy off, ah, sorry, power this guy on so he can stabilize. And then we are going to play around a little bit more with some of the other multimeters which I have in my office. And yes, here in my eternally messy lab, I've got my two primary standards and we see the 7150, which is my most accurate meter. I'm not, I don't want to power on the 7061. Gives us this. And now next guy we go for is this little chappy down here. They are both, of course, sufficiently warmed up. And he also seems to agree to some level. And now it's time to bring in the new guy. And yes, as we can see here, this is then the final result, which is actually not that bad, especially if you think just how cheap this multimeter has been to purchase. Now, if we look carefully at the two multimeters in the back, we see that they are both nominally rated to 2 ampere maximum, with the one below being downrated due to the lack of fuse availability. And here, if we look at this guy, we see that like many other cheaper multimeters, it also has a 10 amp, a nominal 10 amp mode. And I personally call this the suicide mode because it's usually just a little bit of bent wire acting as a shunt, but we can play with it a little bit as well. And we are not a big high current lab, so the strongest thing we can produce reliably is 5 ampere via our Hevlet Packard power supply. And it's now set to constant current mode. And as you see, the value is starting to drift. And this drift is not caused by the power supply, but is caused by the element inside of the multimeter heating up. And if we can see this amount of drift being caused by 5 amps, then quite obviously, if we drive 10 amps, the situation is going to be even worse. 
So I will let this sit a little bit more. And as we see, it is still climbing slowly but surely, but it is still climbing up as the element heats up more and more. And now we're going to switch it off for a wee bit. That's just the residual current flowing in the Hewlett Packard when it is powered off. And now after a good minute of that time, we turn it on again and we see that the values got lower again and start to climb again. So this is quite obviously some kind of thermal phenomenon taking place in the thing. And then for the next and basically final test, we're going to look at the conductivity. which to me looks like it reacts quite quickly. Or at least it beeps very quickly. And that is what you actually need if you are running across a PCB or something like that. And we see that the voltage which it uses is about one volts, as you see here. So that is not so bad if you happen to use it in a circuit with some realistic components. And also... As we see here, the current flowing into the meter is also quite limited. So I have to say, I'm pretty happy with this function, all in all. And so, for now, this is the first bits of test which are done. Maybe I will make another video with more tests in the future. If not, in the show notes you also find a very detailed analysis website from a guy from Denmark. But, to cut a long story short, would I recommend this? Hell yes! As long as you stay away from AC, from line voltage, high voltage, this kind of stuff, where the construction can become a problem. This is, for the everyday lab use, a cheap and cheerful product. And for this, I would recommend it. But of course, keep it away from high current or high voltage situations. And in the name of all that's holy, don't ever allow anyone with this thing near three-phase current especially not in Europe. Either way, I thank you very much for your attention and see you soon. Bye bye.